In this video, I'll be talking about the cohortative hey. The cohortative in Hebrew is a, a version of the subjunctive. There are actually a variety of ways that Hebrew creates a, a subjunctive effect in verbs, and the cohortative is, is one of them. Now, the cohortative only happens in first person imperfect verbs. I'm going to repeat that. The cohortative only occurs in first person imperfect verbs. So verbs with a prefix, either first person singular or first person plural. I will do something or we will do something. Those kinds of verbs, okay? That's very important to keep in mind. The sign of the cohortative is the comet's hay. Comet's hay on the very end of a verb, a first person imperfect, right? First person imperfect, if you have a cohortative, hay, a comet's hay on the end, then uh, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a cohortative. Now, what, uh, what it does, the way that you translate it, is that you would add, generally, the, the word let. So, let me do something, or let us do something. So, in Genesis 11, uh, the Tower of Babel, all the people gather together, and they say, let's brick bricks. Let us uh, brick bricks or make bricks. That's a cohortative. Um, I've written down three examples here. The first one illustrates uh, the, the uh, interpretive challenge that's sometimes posed by the cohortative because it's, though it's generally translated with uh, let us or let me, it can also, instead of adding uh, the subjunctive in that it's articulating a desire or a wish, it can uh, express more forceful emotion uh, in, in, in expressing certainty. So, I will surely do this. Or, we will indeed, or we will certainly do something. Or be something. And so here in Exodus 3, this is the story of the burning bush. And Moses is um, leading his flock beyond the wilderness. And he sees this, this bush burning. And it, doesn't, it isn't consumed. And he, he thinks to himself, or he says to himself, Asura. Asura. And sur is the word to turn aside. And so he says, Asura, to go see this thing. The question is, does he say, let me turn aside and go see what this thing is? Or does he say, I will most certainly turn aside and go look and see what this is? Why does the bush burn and is not consumed? Well, that's a minor example. It may not change the implications of the verse all that much. I mean, there's some interpretive uh, impulses there, but not, not significant. On the Canvas page, I've written... Uh, a short uh, example of a much more significant interpretive problem or interpretive uh, uh, dilemma created by the use of the cohortative in the story of the binding of Isaac. But I'll let you read it there. The point is that it requires interpretation. Um, here are two more examples just so you can see the form uh, and uh, imagine how it might be translated. So here, from Genesis 23, this is, and uh, interestingly, right after the story of the binding of Isaac, when Sarah dies, at the beginning of chapter 23, and Abraham goes to uh, bury her. And so he said, bury is one of your vocab words. Ekbera. Ekbera. So the, the root is kof, bet, resh. The Aleph is your first common singular prefix, making this an imperfect form, first person imperfect form. 
And then the comet's hey on the end is your cohortative, ekbera. Uh, and then meti is my dead, uh, the one of mine which, which has died. So ekbera meti is, is let me bury my dead. And it's, this comes uh, almost in the form of a, of a request to the people of the land. Can I find or can I purchase land that would allow me to bury my dead? Let me bury my dead. Um, and then uh, later on, three chapters later in Genesis 26, Isaac, Abraham's son, is making a covenant with the people of Gerar. Actually, they're coming to him and wanting to make a covenant with him because they see that God has blessed him and they don't want him to grow so large and overpower them. And so they say, and in fact, all of these words are vocab words of yours, which is nice. Nichreta, nichreta. So you see the noon is the prefix, first common plural prefix. Your root is kaf, resh, tav, to cut or to make. And then your comments, hey, cohortative. Nichreta. So is it cut or make? Well, what's the context? Verit. Verit. Verit is, of course, a covenant. The bait is uh, soft here. It does not have a dagish, lane in it, because it follows an open syllable. Nichreta verit, let us cut a covenant or make a covenant. Imach, im is the preposition with. Uh, the kaf here is the second masculine singular suffix. Imach, with you. Nichreta verit imach, let us cut a covenant with you. So the cohortative happens only on first person imperfect forms, and it's just simply the addition of a comite on the end, generally gives the idea of let us or let me do something, but in certain circumstances also uh, can have this sort of more forceful articulation of certainly, I will or we will certainly do something.